Hello, Mr. Simons. We would like to ask you first of all uh, about the main, what are the main activities of Eurocris. Eurocris is an international organization that deals with research information, and our two main activities are the production uh, and the maintenance of a international standard for exchange of research information. That standard is called CERIF. Uh, which is short for the Common European Research Information Format. Um, this format is meant to provide a standard to exchange information from uh, one system to another. So from one CRIS system, one research information system to another research information system, but also, for instance, from a research information system to a repository system, or from a local research information system to a national research information system and, and so on. So this is, is one of the uh, uh, purposes and one of the functions of CERIF. Another function is that it's a di data model that is a standard uh, for developing and building research information systems. So you can use the CERIF data model as, let's say, the architectural blueprint data model to build a research information system. So Serif was also um, advised, is also advised by the EU uh, as a recommendation to member states. So it's an international accepted standard. So that is one thing that we do, is the development and the maintenance of this standard. A second in, in a very important uh, function or activity of Eurocris is to organize um, meetings, to organize events. Uh, for instance, we have membership meetings twice a year and every two years we have an international conference. And the idea uh, behind these events or the idea behind the, the, the goal of these events is to bring the community together, so to bring various stakeholders, uh, interest groups that are dealing with or that have to do with research information to bring them together. So that could be researchers, uh, research managers, uh, policy makers, um, other organizations in the field of research information, uh, etc. So these are the two main uh, activities or functions of Eurocris. Uh, why are CRIS systems important for academic and the research uh, community? Well, um, they are important for, for, for various stakeholders, so you cannot say that this is an, in, they are important uh, for this and these reasons. You always should look at, at, the, at, at the stakeholders or at, at various uh, groups uh, for, for which uh, CRIS systems are important. Uh, for instance, they are very important for the management of research institutions and universities. Why? Because the information in CRIS systems uh, provides them with the data about how the research is uh, done and uh, how the research groups perform within the organization. So it is a tool for managers to see whether uh, the goals and the aims of the research are reached, where are weak spots, where are strong spots, who is producing uh, a lot, who is producing uh, uh, below level, etc. So as a, a uh, database where, uh, for, for management information, that's, that's one thing. Secondly, uh, crises are very important for the researchers themselves because in CRIS we store a lot of information about uh, research and researchers, about basically about all aspects of research, so about projects, about people working on the project, uh, about the funders of the project, about the, um, the time and the money that goes into the project, the results of the project in terms of publications, data sets, patents, uh, 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 other products, etc. So um, this means that a researcher can use the information in a CRIS, for instance, to generate a CV or to generate even various CVs. For instance, imagine that, that a researcher is applying for a job and he can use the CRIS to 
generate a CV, but he can also use the quiz to generate a CV just for exposing uh, his career uh, on a web page, for instance. That, that's another possibility. Um, or when being on a conference, he can show the people through the information on the Chris what he has produced, what he is doing. So this is, this is a, a very important function for the researcher. Then Chris's have a function uh, on, let's say, a, a above uh, the, the uh, institutional level, they have a function for the evaluation of research on the national level. So in a lot of countries there are evaluation systems uh, to see which universities and which institutes are, are performing well and which are performing uh, uh, less. And for this of course they need data and these data also they can uh, they get out of a CRIS and the CRISs are, are frequently or ac actually in, in almost all of these countries, crises are used as the basis to provide the information to the uh, to the national level. Now, on a more general uh, level, crises are of importance also for an institution to show the research to the world, to to, to provide the world with information about the the research, to showcase their research, so to speak, to the world on the internet and uh, etc. So. Uh, that's why crises are, are very important and uh, crises more and more also become important as the primary resource for other systems. So for instance these days in, in a lot of countries and institutions crises are the uh, basic system that uh, provides the information to the open access repository of, of the institution. Crises also provide information to uh, data set repositories. So uh, what you see is that CRISIS get more and more into a central position where they uh, provide information, where, the, where basically the information of, of the research is stored and from within the CRIS it is uh, exported to all kinds of information requesters. Um, this function is very important because it means that Basically, the researcher only has to manage the information in one system and uh, from that system all the uh, information requesters are served. In the past, well, it's still the, it's still the same in, in, in these days in, in a lot of cases, but uh, in the past it, it, it was we had a situation that for instance at a certain moment the funder came with a form for information then the government came with a form for information then uh, perhaps uh, the EU etc etc so uh, you can imagine that researchers are not happy with that and I always use this 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 image of uh, a researcher at nine o'clock having to fill in the information in the system of the funder at ten o'clock in the information of the government, and at eleven o'clock in, in the in the system of the uh, of the uh, institution. So, and this is all is 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 in a lot of cases this is the same information. So, uh, researchers are not happy for that, and the CRIS has what we call could be a one-stop shop for registering the information and then putting that information out to all kinds of information requesters. So it's a long story, but crises are also very important. So. Do you <laughs> think it's that the start from real and space and space? Oh, yeah. It depends, of course, on uh, from case to case, but speaking from my own university, yes, they, they, they are familiar with it because they have a personal interface to the system and uh, they also see the benefits of, of being able to manage all their research information in one interface and not, as, as I already explained, have to deal with various interfaces. Uh, it is, maybe it's very, not very easy for the researchers to, uh, to publish their uh, activities in the systems or in, in a local repository or an academy or research case. What do you think about the different uh, platforms? that the uh, have to, to complete in order to... Exactly, that's, what, that's exactly what I mean. So our policy is that uh, to the researchers, once you have registered in the CRIS, mm -hmm. 
you don't have to worry about the others because there will be automatic information uh, provided to the other systems. Okay. That's the idea. How do you envision the future of three systems in Europe and generally in other countries all over the world? Yes, well, if, if uh, I see the current trend or the current situation and if it goes on like this, I think they will become more and more important mm -hmm. uh, in the direction that I just, uh, that I just uh, indicated. Um, because uh, almost everywhere in, in, in at least the, the countries that I'm familiar with, uh, you see that, that these crises uh, are, are getting into that position of being the primary resource for, inf for research information. So they, uh, in, in, in most cases, especially also the commercial crisis like, like Pure, uh, which is a commercial CRIS, but also DSpace CRIS, which is an open source CRIS. They, uh, the, the CRIS is regarded as the primary resource where the information is stored and then it goes to the open access repository. So, um, yeah, and also as the source for evaluation, for benchmarking of research, CRISs are becoming more and more accepted and, and implemented. So their role and their importance will, will, will only grow. And people also, uh, people who, who were before, or, or people, well, uh, uh, groups, uh, or, or, or Grimia that were, were previously not, not aware of, of the possibilities of crisis, are, are, getting, um, are, are getting into the, uh, uh, the idea, or, or they are beginning to see the, the potential of the CRIS system. So to me, crisis, the, the importance of crisis will only grow. Since we are an organization that, that uh, basically, basically uh, deals with, with crisis and, and represent the CRIS community, of course, we, we, we will try to promote that, uh, that development, of course, yes. What would be the next step you think uh, towards a sustainable European research information infrastructure? Is it main topic of this? <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's, I think we have, for instance, uh, now we have this initiative called the, the European Open Science Cloud. And uh, I think there, uh, to really make that work, and, and they of, often in this respect the, ter the term FAIR is, is, is being used, so the data sets should be findable, accessible, interoperable and reusable. Um, to make that happen, I think uh, information that is, is uh, included in crisis is needed because in crisis there is a lot of information that has to do with the findability of the data, the accessibility of the data, the, the uh, interoperability, the interpretability of data. So um, yeah, to, to come to a research information infrastructure, I think this EOSC, European Open Science Cloud, could be a good initiative to link to and, and to try to uh, start things off actually. Um, so what we are trying to do as Eurocris is, is to talk with the, uh, the, the people from the EOSC and try to um, get that idea into their vision so that, uh, that they include CRIS systems and, and, and an infrastructure of CRIS systems as uh, as an element or as a part of uh, of this initiative another thing of course is uh, on the european level already exists the open air um, infrastructure which basically is also a research information infrastructure at least uh, on certain aspects or objects of research information this is also something I think what we as Eurocris should get more into cooperation with and try to move together and see where uh, we from Eurocris and from the Chris community can bring in added value and, and added functionality uh, to the uh, and expertise to the open air uh, community so that, that together we can, uh, we can extend this open air infrastructure into a, uh, a more optimal, a more optimal, and uh, and uh, promote the use and the uh, and the functionality of of open air. So these are two things 
I think which are important also from the point of view of Eurogroup to to relate to and to try to cooperate with. Okay. How do you see the future of open access to research data and uh, general to open science, which is a main EU initiative uh, last month? I, I don't know whether I am the most uh, well-placed uh, person to answer that question because Eurocris is not really dealing with open access as such or really uh, be in the in the let's say the the process of of of, of promoting open access as one of its priorities because i uh, at, at the beginning of the interview i indicated that Eurocris has two clear goals the development of serif the development maintenance of serif and the uh, the uh, exchange of information and ideas within the, the research information community, so bringing the community together. Um, open access, yes. Uh, I think that there is this, this sentence that, that says it all, that is uh, open if, if possible, closed if necessary. Um, not everything can be open. I think it's, it's a, a misunderstanding uh, to think that uh, all science could be open because there are all kinds of, of, of uh, types of research or, or of, of, uh, that uh, produce data or produce results that, that cannot be shared because of privacy re uh, rules or of, le of, of legal rules, you know, for instance, to just name, uh, name a few things. But yeah, what I see is that um, on the political level and on the, uh, uh, the the open science and the open access is really a big topic so I think it will go on it will be promoted uh, the challenge in my view is to make it work on the operational level and uh, then you you are uh, dealing or, or the question comes up of, of, of uh, um, how do you uh, can create an infrastructure that, uh, in which this openness is optimally uh, realized. Um, going a, a, a level deeper to answer this question means that uh, you, you have to put the question, uh, what are the uh, conditions for uh, an open access infrastructure, open science infrastructure to work? And then, well, from my experience, but this is not the whole story, but I can can already uh, uh, give you three conditions or three aspects that should be fulfilled at least. That is, uh, one is that we should talk the same language. And for this, I mean, we should uh, use the same definitions and the same vocabularies and classification systems. That is one. The second is that uh, we should use unique identifiers, persistent identifiers for all objects in the research information domain, not just persons, not just organizations, but also projects uh, and, other, uh, and other objects. A third uh, condition is that an open science and an open access network or infrastructure can only work if uh, there is a standard exchange format. If systems connected to the infrastructure or the network are all talking a different format i mean it will in, in practice not be not work and well politics become aware of some of these uh, elements of some of these conditions they are less aware of others and i think one of the the challenges and also one of the 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 main goals of Eurocris, for instance, but also to, together with other inst other organizations working in this in this uh, research information domain, is to make uh, the decision makers aware that all these three conditions should be met and not just one or not just two.